Hello fellow ho-ho-hos, and welcome to the 2020 Magical Christmas Wonderland Special. At the end of this video, I will gift to you a present as thanks for hanging out here with me this year. Oh yeah, and I got it from Ding Dong, Texas. Poobet and his subscribers are going to be stuffed up nice and close to each other. But for now, go ahead and don a festive hat, prepare a toasty beverage, and let us poke and prod, as we do, into the nooks and crannies of some unusually named places together. With any luck, we'll be a bit more successful than the Thanksgiving special that started with an entirely unrelated round of GeoGuessr and, dare I use the word, finished in Cumbum Forest. The number now flashing on your screen is the number of places we visit in this video, because at this time I have no clue what'll make the cut. With that said, let's start, oh so appropriately, at the North Pole. Well, the one in Alaska anyway. North Pole is a small Alaskan city near Fairbanks. It's known for its year-round Christmas decorations, including candy cane-striped streetlights. First of all, let us inspect the mayor of the North Pole. I am disappointed he doesn't have a long white beard, but the website is on point with the theme. Despite its name, the city is about 1700 miles south of the Earth's geographic North Pole. We don't care, we're feeling festive. North Pole was home to two oil refineries, the town's major industry aside from tourism. That's not very eco-friendly of Santa. North Pole has some of the least expensive residential real estate in Alaska. Property time's gonna be exciting, I think. So the area it's in was a bunch of homesteads originally, and a development company purchased one of the homesteads and divided it and renamed it North Pole in hopes of attracting a toy manufacturer. Apparently Santa Claus's legal name is Thomas O'Connor. I suppose that's what he goes by to retain anonymity in public, but he is legit. He has also been a member of North Pole City Council since 2015. That is a legit Santa. That's a real beard for starters. Bob Ross stated numerous times during his show that he lived in the North Pole for over a decade. The North Pole was the inspiration for Bob Ross's work. Oh, that's fabulous. I wonder if kids that grow up here and go to school and believe in Santa are really excited that they live in the North Pole and if that's really special. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of nice businesses here. Got a photographer, professional dog grooming, couple schools, even the Mormons have a church. North Pole City Hall, what does it look like? Oh, that's that's not what I expected. What are the reviews? Congrats, sir. I'm happy to tell you you got breast milk rating. Tammy Rudolph, pay Sean, okay. 606.5 out of 20 stars from Gerb Ding. Holy Jesus. What the f is that? Wow, that is wildly popular. Nearly 3,000 reviews and 4.3 stars. That is maximum festivity overload. Oh my god, these Christmas villages are my favorite. And they have a little light bulb in them and you plug them in, then you have a little whole city that lights up. Oh, here's one in action. Cute. Oh my god, there's a Dairy Queen. North Polar Espresso. <laughs> really banking on it. All right, let's do a quick street view. Let's do somewhere around the main main road. Yeah, maybe around here. Weird. It it seems kind of flat. I don't know. I guess I'm generalizing Alaska, but I expected it to have mountains. Still, wonder what it looks like in snow. Let's check out some pics. Cute. Love the red trim. Very festive. That's pretty adorable. <gasps> Santa Claus speaks out against North Pole ban of marijuana sales. Santa's officially for weed. You learn something new every day. The website is extensive, but I really do like that they just have a random frozen child under our community. Let's check it out on Zillow if the property's so cheap. I wonder if there's a lot there. Oh, hello. Okay, let's say we want to live downtown. Downtown North Pole. Damn, must get a lot of snow. New kitchen. Five beds, two baths, 300. Yeah, all right. What about across the river? Bit more expensive. They've put a Christmas tree in the pictures. <laughs> so you can preview what it's gonna be like. Is that a moose in the backyard? Yeah, casual moose in the backyard. Ever since I saw that video of that one walking along the road, I can't look at moose the same way again. Look at the perfect snow loaf. That is very satisfying. Let's move on to the next locale. We have in the past visited Santa Claus, Indiana. So let's check out Santa Claus, Arizona. Santa Claus is a populated place. Wow, that's a generic way to put it. 
People live there. And all that's on the map in the preview is West Side Disposal is cheap trash. I think that's somebody bitter who knows their way around Google. It's a populated place in Mojave County, Arizona. Oh, it's abandoned. It was abandoned in 1995. Santa's land office. The office portion was added later. That's, that's very obvious. <laughs> Santa Claus lies approximately 14 miles northwest of Kingman, Arizona, immediately north of Hermit Drive and just south of Grasshopper Junction and the Junk Heart of Chloride, a group of metal statues in Chloride, Arizona that include a flamingo made out of a motorcycle gas tank. What is with this corner of Arizona exactly? Okay, so it began in 1937. By 1942, the town of Santa Claus had become a full-fledged tourist spot. Went into decline in the 1970s. In July 1983, owner Tony Wilcox unsuccessfully offered to sell Santa Claus for $95,000, which was reduced to 52,000 by 1988. That for a whole town. That's a quarter of a house in the North Pole. All remaining operating businesses in the town were closed in 1995. What presently remains is several vandalized buildings, a wishing well, a derailed pink children's train tagged with graffiti. While that sounds terrifying, this probably should have been in our Halloween special. In the 1930s, Nina Talbot and her husband moved from Los Angeles, California to Kingman, Arizona to operate a motel. Talbot held herself out as the biggest real estate agent in California, but also weighed 300 pounds at the time. Here it is, Santa Claus. West side disposal is cheap trash. There's a bulldog with shoes on. It's construction bulldog with shoes only on his back feet. Oh, it's an actual business. And I thought it was somebody bitter. That is the one remaining business. Let's check out a satellite view. Is there anything there? No, it's just planned. Oh, that's so creepy. Oh no, there are a few things. Oh my God, you can tell they were gonna make this into 1950s desert suburbia and it just didn't happen. What is that? We have no clue what it is, it's just a building. Here's another building, just says building. Okay, so so aside from that, it's, yeah, it's a dump. Okay, we need to do a street view, you know it. This is it, Santa's land office. Oh my God, it is just covered in graffiti. Landfill. Santa Claus, Arizona is a landfill. Well, no presents getting delivered here, that's for sure. The sad tale of Santa Claus, Arizona, an iconic roadside ruin now overrun by rattlesnakes. Okay, well, I think we're done there. Next up is Rudolph, Wisconsin. I can't do a Wisconsin accent, but I sure as hell do love it. Can you like to tell Santa what you like for Christmas? A guitar. A guitar, okay. A real guitar? I can't imagine anybody being angry with a Wisconsin accent. Okay, Rudolph, village in Wisconsin. It is 1.2 square miles. That is tiny, but still has 439 people on it. Okay, Rudolph derives its name from Rudolph Township, which in turn was named after Rudolph Hecox. The first white child born within the town's borders. The birth of the first white child is a widely used concept to mark the establishment of a European colony in the New World, especially in the historiography of the United States. Well, Rudolph truly defined the descendants. It's 97.3% white now. Attractions, the Wonder Cave. Ooh, Rudolph Grotto Gardens. Rudolph's Little Deer's Child. Rudolph's Little Deer's Child what? Oh, it's a daycare center. Here are the Grotto Gardens. 160 reviews, 4.7. Peaceful and beautiful. So much work went into this and it is a beautiful, tranquil place. Indeed it is. It does look really nice, actually. I can't tell what this picture is of, but I'm sure it's impressive. Anything Christmas themed? Oh, here we go. The sign. The sign is has Rudolph on it. Yes, excellent. All right, let us continue to Christmas Valley, Oregon, an unincorporated community in Lake County, Oregon, United States. The community was named after nearby Christmas Lake, usually dry. Oh, east of the present town site and the site of the former Lake Post Office. Real estate development around a planned community by M. Penn Phillips called Christmas Valley started after World War II. Christmas Lake, Christmas Lake Valley, and nearby Peter's Sink and Peter's Creek were named for pioneer stockman, Peter Christman. Oh, <laughs> really? That's, that's why Peter Christman, okay. Who grazed his cattle there and had a house at Silver Lake. 
The name Christmas was an early corruption of the name Christman or Christman that became entrenched in the vernacular by 1900. In 1961, developer M. Penn Phillips laid out the town site. Phillips aggressively promoted the community in California to young would-be farmers and retirees, though despite Phillips' claims that the community would soon have more than 5,000 residents, few actually moved there. And thus, the Phillips company faced lawsuits about mis misrepresentation, and the Phillips era is usually considered a scam. The community is perhaps best known by off-road all-terrain vehicle enthusiasts worldwide who ride in the Christmas Valley sand dunes. Oh yeah, let's check that out. I totally forget that parts of Oregon look like this. <laughs> it is not all lush. They did call their churches Christmas though, so they get points for that. This elf. This elf what? General store. No reviews, but they do have a website. No, they don't. Never mind. What else is here? Forever Christmas miniatures. Hot food. No, you're not supposed to eat the miniatures. Christmas Valley Community Church. What the hell is the picture? Damn, Rudolph and his friend came to a really bad end. Best church in Christmas Valley, in my opinion, says Uriah Brown. Well, let's check out the Seventh Day Adventists. Ooh, five stars. That's tough to compete with. Wonderful little country church. Wow, that's the church? That is very much a country church. <laughs> oh, it's on Christmas Tree Lane. That's cute. Snowman, mistletoe, pine, wonderland. And then out of nowhere, crack in the ground road. Can we inspect? Oh, <gasps> no, we can't. Actually, it is really pretty though. Doesn't really look like a Christmas Valley, but it's pretty picturesque in its own way. Christmas Valley shines on camera. Oh, here's the crack in the ground. It's a two mile long, 15 foot wide fissure that's up to 70 feet deep. Walking through crack in the ground is like exploring an open air cave. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. And there's also hole in the ground. Another volcanic landmark with a literal name. It's a big explosion crater. Measures nearly a mile across. If you like, you can also check out neighboring Big Hole. Don't mind if I do. Big Hole southeast of Bend showcases mature what? No, oh, ponderosas. Okay, wasn't sure what we were showcasing. I did not expect us to have a saucy moment in this town visit, but um, we've had one. What else is there? Fossil Lake, where fossils of mammoths, dire wolves, giant beavers. Ooh, and more than a hundred other species have been found there over time. The Lost Forest. Wow, how prehistoric. It's weird seeing a forest that's like spaced out like that. Christmas Valley is quite interesting after all. Let's head on to our last town. We're going to have a Bethlehem off like a dance off, but it's between Bethlehems. Well, one's in North Carolina and the other is in Pennsylvania. So let's do alphabetical order and start in North Carolina. It's the featured image, an emergency. Looks like police and ambulances. Ooh, look at that snowy picture. Very wintry. DJ Wayne Crib, because it's Bethlehem. Popular times, all the time. Many happy married couples enjoying DJ Wayne Cribb at their wedding. Have they thought about the fact that they're in Bethlehem and their last name's Cribb? I find that kind of funny, but maybe that's just me. Oh, we didn't start with the Wikipedia. That's okay, it says actually really nothing except stats. And the images are just of maps. Oh, there's the police occurrence. Oh my God, it's an overturned school bus. <laughs> the main picture. The best lamb is an overturned. Stop! I shouldn't be laughing. Hopefully, nobody got hurt. Molds of Bethlehem. Oh, actual molds. Daughter care? Thank you for the review. What the hell does that mean? Also, I really love this surname. I do wonder what the origin of that is. Holy shit, it's cheap. 22,000. Oh, it's land. Ooh, 799. Pricey. No, this is in Hickory. This isn't in Bethlehem. Wow, that is nice, though. Ooh, hello, it's on the river. Sweet baby Jesus of Bethlehem. This is a very, very nice property. That is in the limits of Bethlehem though, why is it Hickory? Okay, let's check this one, it's right in the middle. Taylorsville? Oh, they've dressed it up for Christmas though. All right, well, we need to see how it compares to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, in the Bethlehem off. Let's see if their Wikipedia is more interesting. Oh my God, it's gigantic. 
It's the seventh largest city in Pennsylvania. Well, I don't think there's going to be much comparison to Bethlehem, North Carolina. On Christmas Eve, David Nitschmann and Count Zinzendorf, with a small group of Moravians, founded the Mission Community of Bethlehem. Ooh, in 1762, Bethlehem built the first waterworks in America to pump water for public use. That's quite an achievement. Oh, it's adopted the nickname Christmas City USA. How appropriate. It's got comfort suites and a holiday inn. It's established as hell. Cryotherapy of Bethlehem. It's got everything. <laughs> Price right of Bethlehem. Oh, how far we've come from birth of Jesus. It's even got El Jefe's tucker here. My name is Jeff. Wonderful. Oh, a little Christmas market. Downtown Bethlehem looks very charming. God, no wonder it's called Christmas City. Oh, cute pic. Oh, Main Street Bethlehem. Oh, this could do with a repair. Well, it's a little hard to compare the two Bethlehems. Pennsylvania one is extremely established. I give Bethlehem, Pennsylvania the prize for most thematic and scenic, and Bethlehem, North Carolina, the prize for funniest reviews. Before we get to the moment you've all been waiting for, we have three runners-up that didn't quite make this list. The first is to Santa Idaho for changing its name literally to secretsanta.com for a year in order to promote the website for the large payment of $20,000. Also on Google Maps, it's home to pretty much just a post office with one happy review leaving these excellent photos of what appears to be a super old-timey post office. Snowflake, Arizona, for not being named after the Jolly Ice Formation, but for its Mormon founders, Erastus Snow and William Flake instead. Very clever. It does snow there a bit, probably most memorably, for when it combined with the UV lights of a marijuana farm, letting everyone know where the goods are at for miles around. And last but not least, Mistletoe, Kentucky, having almost nothing there except literally native mistletoe and featuring the intersection of Rock House School Road, which I kept reading as Schoolhouse Rock Road, and Whoop Floria Road. And no, no one knows what Whoop Floria is, but it's also important to note that the only other road in Mistletoe is Mistletoe Road. Bonus points for Lick Branch nearby. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. I hit up a man in Ding Dong, Texas, as you do, to produce a one-of-a-kind holiday message to thank you all for hanging out with me this year. Oh boy, did he deliver. Actually, he forgot to do one thing I asked for in my request, but the rest of it was so above and beyond that I gave him five stars and was thrilled as is. However, upon dropping him a follow on Instagram, he immediately slid into my DMs, if you will, to rectify the situation. Hey, what's going on, Pooh Better? Hey, it's your boy DC. That's right, Disco Cowboy coming to live in three days. Hey, I just realized I was sending that message and I forgot to say what you wanted me to say right at the end. So if you need me to say it over, if you need me to do something a little more Texan, you want me to do it right, I can redo it. I'm happy to redo it. I can redo it tomorrow. I can redo it uh, if you give me now in the next few minutes. But I got you, all right? And he rectified it three times over. Please enjoy the show. I like this one. I like it. This is our time, all right? Look, this ain't their time. This is Pooh Bet's time. And for Pooh Bet subscribers, all right? What's going on? Look, hey, Pooh Bet got in touch with me. All right, she wants to wish all her YouTube subordinates and subscribers happy holidays, all of them. Happy Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Diwali, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Festivus, happy New Year and happy whatever, happy, just just be happy. Be happy, it's, we're all gonna get vaccinated soon. We're all gonna be stuffed up nice and close to each other. Pooh Bet, Pooh Bet's time for Pooh Bet and his subscribers. And for me, Disco Cowboy, wishing you all my best and happy all those holidays right here from Ding Dong, Texas. I ain't so bad as your boy, man. Your favorite wife swapping snuff, dipping tobacco, chewing coffee pot, dodging frog gig, and alligator thumping, disco dancing, disco cowboy. Come on, you know that. All right, Pooh Bet wants to thank you for supporting her channel because it's the best. All right, I love Pooh Bet's channel. I'm a subscriber. I subscribe. She talks about all them awesome things. Is it the one that talks about all them places? We love Ding Dong, all right? Pooh Bet loves Ding Dong, all right? And I'm there. I'm in Ding Dong. All right. 
Hit me up on my Instagram at the Disco Cowboy Official, man. I'm all alone. I'm lonely right here down in Ding Dong. Come on. This is our time. My neighbors hating on me because I got electricity and internet. Because I know people. Woohoo! Come on down to Ding Dong. Come on. We got, we got acreage. All right. Lots of places for love. I love you all, and I love Pooh Bear, and I love Pooh Bear subscribers. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Right here from your boy DC, down here in Ding Dong. I ain't so bad, hey. Hit me up on Instagram, I'll send you some, some of these shiny stickers, brand new. Love y'all. Merry Christmas. Thanks to Christopher for alerting me to this internet legend, and you can have him wish you anything you want, so go nuts to butts, people. I think our man in Ding Dong said it all, but just in case you missed it, thank you so much for chilling with me in this small but cosy corner of the internet, and sometimes jacuzzis in the desert, and the far-flung reaches of Wikipedia, and all the licks, holes, and knobs of the US. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude to be generously given your time, and many thanks for sharing the kindness of folks in Round Mountain the excellent humour of Floyd's Knobsians, lovely info nuggets of maggot cheese, and everything between and beyond. Have a wonderful Christmas and holiday, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mm.